All right. Uh, here's a short video on the 1.5. Uh, don't break the chain. Uh, you need to pause and go through and read the box up here. Uh, and then you also need to pause and read the sentence up here. All right. I'm not going to go through and read the whole entire thing uh, for you. One, because we know we know you can read. Two, it would be it would be a very boring video. Question number one. Now that you have read it and have come back from it, uh, it says how many people will receive the email on day seven? Well, what we got to do is we got to go back and we got to look at day one through eight, okay, or day one through six, sorry, and find out because I don't have a lot of room here. I'm going to do a table sideways. I should have done this before, but on day one, we need to find out how many people, some days, and number of emails is what this is going to represent. I should do this a little bit differently. Um, we can, we can, we can. So we're going to do days and emails. And then we can go like this. So on day one, how many people are going to get an email? So two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Well, we got to go back and we got to look. If he says, if you go back and underline the important stuff on day one, he sends it to eight of his closest friends. All right. Well, if he sends it to eight of his friends, then each forward it to ten people so that on day two it's received by eighty people. What's the type of progression that's going on here? So on day one, eight. So I want to look at how is this changing? Now, most of us are going to sit here and gather that this is changing. Uh, in the fact that I went from 80 to 8 by multiplying by 10. And that's exactly true. So those 80 people are going to send it to 10 of their friends, which is another 800 people, right? Because if we're going by multiples of 10, 80 times 10 would be 800. And then you're sitting there going, God, I don't want to do this all the day 7. Well, it's not as complicated as you think. 8 to 80 to 800 to 8,000 on day 4, to 80,000 on day 5, yeah, that's a lot of people, to 800,000 on day 6, to 8 million on day 7. So, how many people will receive the email on day 7? 8 million mil will receive an email on day seven, All right? And I know that looks like scratch, but I'm running out of space and quick here. So eight million people, you get the idea. All right, how many people will receive the email on day N? Well, based on what we did, what did we see? How was the previous, uh, how was it growing? So it was growing by a common ratio of 10, right? Now, is, if it's growing by a common ratio of 10, is that an explicit or recursive, well, excuse me, is that an arithmetic or geometric? It's going to be geometric because it's multiplying by 10. So now when we go back and we look at how do we create a ratio, remember that paper I gave you? How are we going to create an explicit equation? So f of n is equal to, I know my first term, which is 8, times my common ratio to the x minus one. Again, this is the first term, this is the common ratio, so there is your, uh, there's your equation right there. And one goof that I made was that x, that x should be an n, because I used f of n, not f of x. So, for any given day, I can figure it out. I can, on day 12, I can say 12 minus 1 times 10 times 8, and that's going to give me the value. All right. Now, how do we keep track of this? That's, that's the question. Well, I'm going to keep track of this, and I'm going to show you this because it's just a different way of keeping track of things. If we just, just posing some different thoughts here. All right. This first one is going to be days, and I'm, I, I'm going to rush through this if I, if I can. All right. So this would be the number of emails, and we already know that the number of emails on day one was eight, on day two was 80, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven. 
and this went to 800 to 80,000 to, to 8,000 sorry getting ahead of myself there okay to 8,000 to 80,000 to 800,000 to 8 million I'll just put 8 million abbreviate that well for my f of n how else could I keep track of that how could I get 8 well I can get 8 how can I get 80 8 times 10 how can I get 800 that's 8 times 10 times 10 right or 8 times 100 but that 100 what I'm doing is I'm showing the breakdown of how do I break down everything I want to break it down because if I can break it down maybe there's an easier way for me to break it down to where it looks something like this and that's kind of sort of what I'm doing this is going to be 8 times 10 times 10 times 10. Notice I have three tens. I have three zeros. This would have four tens, right? And so on and so on until I got down to 8 million. What would it look like in a different notation? What is it going to look like? This is what I'm after here. Oh, by the way, how would I get 8 if I multiplied by 10? Um, no, bad choice. That's over here. How would I get 8 if I went by multiples of 10 because down here is multiples of 10. I'm still multiplying by 10 but if I go to the 0 power 10 to the 0 power is 1 times 8. Now why am I doing that? Because look at all of this here. 8 times 10 to the first power is 80. 8 times 10 to the second power is 800. 8 times 10 to the third and see how how it's easy. So if I keep going using the exponent now when I get down to 8 million it's 8 times 10 to the not the 8th power, not the 7th power, but the 6th power. 10 to the 6 times 8 is going to be 8 million. Uh, so there's, there's the idea behind that. Again, if we use uh, using exponents. All right, so keep this in mind because we're going to use this a little bit later. Now, what if we wanted to know the total of how much money uh, it cost? Okay, so cost in dollars. Well, how much is it going to be uh, for eight people? For eight people, it says it's four dollars and ninety-five cents. Four dollars and ninety-five cents times uh, eight is going to be three thirty-nine dollars and sixty cents. So that's how much it's going to cost for the first eight people that come in and get a super scooper. Well, it's going to increase, right? Well, then it goes from three dollars and ninety uh, thirty-nine dollars and sixty cents to three hundred and Ninety-six dollars and some change, and then it goes up from there to three thousand nine hundred and sixty dollars and some change. Now, notice it's still the same numbers. We just only added some zeros. Why is that? Because it's multiples of ten. It's the same answer, but I'm just moving the decimal over one more place. The the that's that's the main one of the main points, and then the other point is. I would just add all these to total, and that would be like 43 million. There's no way he's spending that kind of money, okay, uh, for free ice cream. So finding uh, takeaways from this, finding the common ratio in a geometric sequence. How do we do that? Uh, okay, we're going to divide any output by the previous output. That's how we figure that out. That's how we can, and most of us understand that, hey, we know, like in this case, we know it's multiplying by 10. We can see that, okay? An explicit equation for this set of data here. Um, oh, that's finding a common ratio from a geometric sequence. Sorry, this is from a table. That's from a table. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, an explicit equation for this is going to be f of n equals, what is that? That is my first term times my common ratio to the n minus 1. Okay, look back in your, in your table. Recursive equation, well, hey, it's the first term. f of 1 equals 8. And then we're going to say that we take f of 10, which is equal to the previous term. In this case, times r, my common ratio. And from a graph, I'm not concerned about a graph, all right? So this takes care of the 
uh, 1.5 task. I know that's short, uh, but ask questions as you need to, please.